was 5.31 p.m. on May the 5th, 2018, when Kerf, Murf, Ultimate Zombie Toast, and Ninjarek sat around the metaphorical internet bonfire to record episode 6 of the How Long to Beat podcast. Boom, boom. All right, so <laughs> we'll ignore the time zone and go with five thirty-one. <laughs> In important places, it's five thirty-one. Yeah. Plus, I mean, it's gonna be a week later, and probably a totally different time by the time this actually goes up online. So the introduction doesn't stand up to much scrutiny. <laughs> <laughs> Have they ever? That's true. All right, so. <laughs> So for this episode of the podcast, all of us have places to be and people to meet, lives to live, so we're going to keep it a little short. So we're going to have three main sections today, currently playing Recently Beat, moving on to questions from the forums, and then we're going to just let Rick go ham about his new 3DS that he has purchased, and hope that we don't regret it. So, let's go ahead and start in with our first segment, our currently playing recently beat. Who would like to start? Ladies first. Oh, okay. Oh, Thanks, Rick. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and take it then. <laughs> but I'm um, Tish. Oh, you beautiful beast, you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Toast, what are you going to do? What are you going to talk uh, about? Let's see. I just started not the new God of War, but the old God of War. I hey. started the first one. Good guess. I have never played God of War. And oh my god, Kratos is not a good person. Not even it's remotely. Like super, like super surprising. I didn't like <laughs> I didn't think about the content when I started. I was like, oh, oh, he's doing bad things. He's not a good person. <laughs> You're it's absolutely like super, right. <laughs> invigorating though because it's just like i wonder what he's gonna oh yep he's going to do horrible things <laughs> he has an option here to do a not horrible thing but he's gonna do the horrible thing instead circle is the horrible button in that game <laughs> it's the the first one doesn't give you much option you just kind of do <laughs> yeah just, i mean i played also oh, gone you just press x and things happen yeah <laughs> It's weird when you think about it the other way, though, because the new one is giving redeeming qualities to the God of War. <laughs> you know, when you when you take a step back and think about it, the angry approach does make a little bit more sense. Well, yeah, I know, but I, I like the character depth that they gave him in the new one. Even though I haven't played it either, I've just been, like, seeing things here and there. I I've the only just started the new one and i i think i do appreciate the character depth but equally i appreciate the lack of character depth in the previous games it's like i like them for different reasons because i mean in the older games i just like being this literal god monster in greek mythology just killing everything with these chain blades around my arms i think this is one of the many times where again we find ourselves in the middle and then at opposite sides of the binary because i i played the first god of war a few months back i'd only played the psp ones before and what i've always loved about it is that it just drops you in there's no real introduction and it's just like go and fuck someone's day up. <laughs> i i can get behind that approach to gameplay the thing is i even though like he has more character depth than the new, the new one it's definitely there in the old one like i like the storytelling that's there like there's a method to his madness, and there's a reason for him to be jaded and angry. So it's not just, like, indiscriminately killing. It's just, like, he is a bad dude. He does bad things, but there's mm. kind of a reason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, what if Hercules, instead of dealing with his uh, guilt productively, just decided he was going to destroy everything in existence? And it's kind of a fun little rabbit hole go to go down. Um, it kind of... I watched uh, Guren Lagan recently, and... Guren Lagan? 
Yeah. That was <laughs> Sorry. Stupid, the pronunciation. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I might be pronouncing it wrong too, so. I don't. I mean, I, I watched it recently, so I should remember how they pronounced it, but in any case, that that anime. And I think I like them in the same way that they both both stories just go to such excesses, uh, ultimately. And, I mean, of course, Toast, if you keep playing the original trilogy, you're going to find this out about the lengths at which it goes to. But... It really is an incredible trilogy for that. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. What are you playing it on? Um, I have the games, but I'm playing them on my PC. Ah, and, okay. Um, it was quite something because it was running like piss. And then I was just like, this shouldn't be happening. Uh, yeah, apparently... If your computer is too good, it bottlenecks the game. So you actually have to change things for it to be like eight times its resolution for it to actually run properly. Yeah. I didn't mean to drop you in it. <laughs> I no. was just like, are you playing the HD remaster or are you playing the original? No, I have Neither. games, but sometimes it's just more convenient to to play them online. Yeah, I get that. It depends like, what you got hooked up, and I think we've had that conversation. I before. have six copies of Wind Waker, but I'm probably going to play it on my PC just because it. I don't want to set up my GameCube or my Wii U. Yeah, and Dolphin's <laughs> one of those rare examples where it's probably a better experience than start. Uh, Semu. I'm gonna Sorry? A, I'm going to be playing it on Semu, not uh, the Wii U no one. No idea. There's a Wii U one? Yeah. Hmm. How's it? Mm -hmm. It works okay. <laughs> so Solid you, recommendation on, there. Yeah, so depending you, on what game you use. Why are you gonna be playing one of your favorite games on a just okay emulator? Because um I can up the shader scales and the resolution more than what the Wii U can handle, plus the Wii U I don't want to go to because it's at my parents' house, I don't want to take their Netflix machine away from them. Uh, <laughs> or you could wait another two years until the emulator's better. And then experience it properly. Or I could just play Wind Waker like eight times and then play it more once it gets better. Nah, flat. We'll move Freaking straight thinking. past it. So, God of War, what else have you been playing? Um... <laughs> it again. I didn't play, so I'm Kira Kira, and I think I have two routes left. And I, it's it's good. And then I started my, I started EF: A Tale of Two, which is um, a Minori game. And Minori is like super good for the money. Like almost everything is animated, and all the CGs like there's over like two thousand per game. So it's like super super value intensive. Like you're getting a lot for your, what you're paying. Mm -hmm. So Kira Kira, Kira Kira's the punk rock one. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, by nice. Overdrive with really sketchy art. <laughs> the like it's 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 pretty like I like good art, which is why <laughs> a lot of like a, American visual novels. I'm like I don't think so. Like I think Katawa Shoujo has really terrible art. Um, oh, well, it does. Up. Did you it's like okay, that? it's serviceable. Why does it matter? <laughs> it's, it's gross. It's not that good. They worked really hard on it and the CGs are pretty good, but like they care, like the I just have flashbacks to Misha's like drills and it's just like Ugh, no thank you. See, I find that endearing in a weird way. It's like they tried their best. They gave they it a go. Drills to pier pierce the heavens. <laughs> there we go with more Gurren Logan. Okay, and I think that's that's really all I've been doing. I've been trying for Majora's Mask, but I don't, I don't play portable games too much. And I don't go anywhere, so I don't have a reason to pull out like my Switch or my 3DS as much as I used to when I was a young child with promise. A young whippersnapper. Yeah. Nah. All right, Rick. I think it's your turn. Go on then. I'll take it. So, University Deadline Simulator. Still. The end is in sight. Yeah, the main quest line, I'm, I'm close. 
I think I'll be done with it in time for summer. That's the main thing. Uh, but in the meantime, just to keep my sanity, I've been sort of switching in and out of it. So, where's the list? I have beaten six games in the time since we last recorded. Whoa. I'm going to talk about five of them briefly here. They're not big games. Nothing to get excited about. Uh, <laughs> so, there's one I'm going to save to talk about a little bit later. But in order of when I completed them, the first one is Deus Ex Go. Better than Hitman Go. Not as good as Lara Croft Go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure they're very good games, but <laughs> I can't take it seriously. Why not? They're mobile games. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so. they're mobile spin-offs of perfectly functional console games. That's true. But they're different. They're good in their own right. It's, it's almost like if you consider them as Go games and each one's themed after a different IP, I think that's the better way of looking at them. So the Deus Ex one differentiates itself from the other two by focusing on powers that you pick up and can choose where you use them. So in Hitman, you could use snipers and rocks and, and things that you find in the environment, but you had to use them as soon as you stepped on them. Whereas with Deus Ex, you can pick them up and use them where you choose. And sometimes they will regenerate, sometimes they won't. Um, but yeah, I mean, you'll know whether or not the Go games are for you. It really is quite obvious. Excuse me. I mean, the only Go yeah. game I've played is Pokemon Go. And I'm just imagining, like, the Hitman equivalent of that. Like, do you just go out and kill random people? or Right, I should differentiate. Pokemon Go is a different thing altogether. <laughs> so, uh, the Go games are sort of a top-down, turn-based board game. So you get to move a space and everyone else on the board will move a space at the same time. So you'll have guards following set patterns, you will have um, stationary objects, sentry turrets, things like that, that will notice you if you walk into their eye line. And by manipulating the paths that the guards take and using powers and doing those things, your objective generally is to get from A to B. So it's a puzzle game. Mm, okay. Um, but they... If you go on the page and you have a look, you'll have a rough idea whether or not it's for you. Uh, the next one is League of Evil, which was another mobile game, but it's been ported to Vita. And it's good. It's short. It's very basic. It's sort of a, a throwback retro platformer type thing. Very precision jumping. Very reliant on timing. But it's a bit like Meat Boy in that as soon as you die you get to throw yourself straight back into it. And so that really does help with a lot of the frustration. It, it makes it a bit more manageable. And I beat it the same day I bought it. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it's nothing special, but it's good at what it does. The next one was Prinny, Can I Really Be the Hero? Which is sort of the opposite end in terms of an approach to retro platforming. I hated it. And I think the main Ooh. thing... Really? Hated it. I, I love the comedy, I love the characters, but the platforming is ass. It's awful. And the main problem is that it feels like it goes out of its way to fuck you over. And not in a here's something for you to overcome way, in a here's something that's going to wind you up way, and we know we're doing it that way, fuck you way. Please. So, well, ooh. The main... <laughs> The main problem, apart from enemy and platform placement, is that you can't adjust your jump, jump in midair. So in Mario, you can sort of move yourself back and forward a touch to, to compensate if you've overshot a jump. You can't do that in Prinny. The starting trajectory of your jump is the final trajectory of your jump. So you can recognize that you fucked up mid-jump, but there's Bleep. no fix. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be one of those episodes. But yeah, it, <laughs> the game makes me very angry, and I desperately wanted to like it, but I just didn't. It really rubbed me up the wrong way. So it's Monster Trash Fire? <laughs> it, that's one way of describing it, but I think that was a bit too generous, really. Whoa, dang. Mega mm. Monster trans, uh, Trash Fire, it evolved. You the mega it, evolution. Yeah, I have like a whole slew of them, and I figure if you're allowed to say the F word like five times, and I'm allowed 
two mega monster trash fires. <laughs> that was your third one. Sorry. You're allowed as many mega monster trash fires as you want. None of those are Ooh. curse words. Ooh. <laughs> but, hang on, I'll get the soundboard up for later. Oh wait, I did end up finishing a game. Yay! Yay. So, Jason Jen, no matter, took 35 hours, and then I played this really, really crappy, um... The art was good, but it's by the creator of Nakopara. And, um... Is that it, the one where it's, like, the girls with tails and ears and shit? Yeah, that's <laughs> Nakopara. But, um, and then I played Tropical Liquor, and it was really bad. It was incredibly bad. Like, it was so boring. The, the only reason I, I think I got it for free somewhere, and the only reason I played it was because I like the art. I think the art's really good. It's so glossy. But that one took me, I think, three hours to get everything. It was just really badly done. And I wish I didn't have it. <laughs> so you go on to your thing now. Okay, am I allowed to resume? <laughs> yes, you're allowed. Okay, thank Actually, you. no, no. You, uh, you're getting your red card for the amount of F-bombs you've dropped. You have to evacuate <laughs> I mean, I, the field. I get a yellow first. That's poor referee decision-making. Uh, <laughs> so, the final two are El Shaddai, which I mentioned a while back, and I think you said you'd played it, Kurt. Oh, yeah. Great game. It looks pretty. <sighs> I saw it, I screenshots when I was posting to Twitter, and I was like, oh, this game's super pretty. <laughs> yeah, and the the art sort of carries it a little bit. It's one of those games where when you dissect it, everything is a little bit lacking, probably barring the, the art. But everything comes together and is a little bit more than the sum of its parts. So the combat is very, very basic. Um, a little bit imbalanced, it feels. So there's, there's sort of a, a weapon triangle, a bit like in Fire Emblem, with a standard melee weapon, a ranged weapon, and sort of a very heavy, slow, cumbersome weapon. And the ranged weapon is very, very powerful when it's being used against you, but it feels like a paper sword when you yourself try to use it. And because a lot of the fights rely on you using it in that triangle, there are fights where you have to either struggle through with it because it's what you're supposed to use, or struggle through with what the game is actively discouraging you from trying to use. Um, so it's like a weapon triangle? Yes, yeah, well, it is a weapon triangle. But one of the weapons in the triangle sort of screws the entire triangle over a little bit. <laughs> so that's what I mean. It, I, it doesn't feel very well balanced. But the combat itself, that aside, is fluid and, and enjoyable for the duration. The story makes zero sense, but in a good way. It, it draws upon... Um, some biblical verses on the book of enoch and it's sort of a based on a true story situation it really isn't following that text well it uses true story is kind of a questionable use of the term I, but well i mean in the sense when you watch a film and it says based on a true story and it turns out they just ripped the name of two characters and then wrote a new story for them that's what i mean it's it proclaims that it's based on the book of enoch but when you go and have a look afterwards because you want to make sense of the senseless. <laughs> there really is no sense to be found anywhere. Not even in the source material, funnily enough. But it's definitely worth a play. Like I say, it all sort of comes together and is fun overall. I want to put a butt on there, but I don't really know what but. So, so like, score out of ten, what would you give it? I would give it a hesitant seven. I might. Play it. Uh, it's for PS3. Oh, never mind then. I'd actually have to. Uh, <laughs> go well, the emulator they're working on. Give it a couple of months. It's probably. Oh, I know, but I don't really like. I don't like stealing games. I like paying for them. It's just it's hard to find PS3 games here. It, I, I will send you it. my copy. <laughs> I don't want your your copy. It would be way too expensive to send it. We'll and work it out afterwards. Anyway. Was PS3 region locked or region unlocked? I'm pretty certain it's region free. I'm not sure. I'll have to of, I think you yes. might be right. Yeah, most Sony things aren't region locked anymore. Yeah, I think it's only the 360 that was locked that gen. Well, um, Wii U was locked. Yeah, that's Nintendo. I'm saying Sony's aren't locked. Well, I'm, I was talking about that generation, because I know the Wii oh, wasn't. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm pretty certain the PS3 wasn't. I might be wrong. 
The Wii is locked now. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was region free for a long period. No. No. It was not. We was, was locked. Yeah. We wasn't region free. Wii U wasn't region free. Most Nintendo things are not region free. I I'd, I'd say almost all of them. Yeah, I think it's, Switch the console, is the only one now. I think now. the 3DS is uh no, that one's region locked. The 3DS is the first handheld to be region locked. The DS and everything backwards wasn't. I know because my copy of 999 is an American one. Um, it, and a couple of others. It doesn't really affect me too much, except for when I specifically buy, like, the Vita was the only thing that really affected me. Yeah, and that's only region locked if you're trying to buy digitally. Yeah, which was why I was like, oh, this sucks. So I, I have, like, you can, like, factor reset it to get, like, the region, and it's yeah. weird. It, if the memory weren't an issue, it'd be cheaper just to buy another Wii, another Wii, another Vita. And for the audience, I got a perfect eye roll from Kerf for that awful joke. <laughs> you can't even name. see my eyes. There's too much glare on my lenses. Yeah, oh, the reflection looks, moved. I saw it. It's super cool. It looks like you have computer, computers <laughs> for eyes. It is like Google Glass. Yeah. I live in the future, actually. I'm, uh... I'm broadcasting into the past to communicate with both of you. All right, Rick, you got about three minutes left. Do you have anything else to say? I have one last one, and I okay. finished it today, and I won't need all three of my minutes to talk about it. So Part of those three game... minutes are mine, but I don't have much to oh, say either. Shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <Ooh>. uh, <laughs> so, as I said before, I love excuses to play on my Game Boy Micro, and the excuse this time was the advanced port of Tack and the Power of Juju. Oh, you were talking about that last episode, weren't you? Yeah, I said I'd picked it up. Um, it's very cookie cutter. The hitboxes are a bit off, but that's the only main criticism. It took me about two hours to beat. I paid about as much in pounds. I, it was okay. So why do you actively choose to play subpar versions of good games. <laughs> well, I don't know if Tack was ever a good game. Okay, fair. Medi <laughs> mediocre at best, I guess. But still, oh, you're it was playing. Fun experience with like co-op. Pardon? It was super fun co-op. I mean, huh. the graphics make me like sick, but it was it's fun to play drunk. <laughs> you could say that about a lot of things. And I will. <laughs> good to hear. So. I quite like seeing how those things are pared down. It's sort of cool to see, especially in some of the more ambitious conversions, what the developers do to, to try and squeeze it in. And it's not like I buy awful stuff. Mediocre normally can be okay for my purpose, which is using my micro when I'm on public transport. So for those... Actually, that's another thing that bugged me about TAC. It doesn't about most of the other games I've been doing this kind of stuff with. But TAC has eight worlds. And if you don't complete the entire world, then when you close the game down and restart it, it will make you start from the beginning of the world. It doesn't save your progress until oh the end God. of the world. That mm -hmm. isn't on the original. I No, I think it's just a quirk of the port, and it... That's poor. ...caught me out twice. And I'm, I'm annoyed at the game the first time, annoyed at myself the second time for forgetting, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's okay, but I wouldn't recommend it. And that's me. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I've basically just been playing what I've been playing for, like, the past two months. So, like, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, Ace Attorney Trilogy, um, whatever else I've been playing, Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, I've made a lot of progress in Xenoblade Chronicles. I'm just getting on to the Mechonis from the Bionis, so I guess I'm kind of like at the halfway point, I'm assuming. Um, is this on Wii or are you playing the 3DS port? This is on Wii, yeah. Okay. On Wii. Um, but yeah, I'm still having a blast with that. Uh, it is getting to the point where like, I, I can't play it for as long prolonged periods as I used to when I got started. I'm like, I'm, I get a little bit burnt out when I enter a new grand sweeping vista of space. Like I got to the snowy mountain and I was like, Oh boy, 
I get to explore this for the next 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> and it, it ended up being fun still, but you know, it, it definitely is, you know, do they need to be this huge overall? Does anyway. it feel padded to you? Cause I only, I only played a little bit of it before it sort of fell by the wayside for me, but I remember feeling that the game was taking liberties with my time a little bit, especially in terms of like what you say, the vast expanses. And I appreciate the, the scope of it and how it's impressive for the hardware. But I did often feel like I was being made to sort of move further and do more than really I'd have to. Yeah. I mean, it is tricky because from like a thematic perspective, like, just how titanic everything is, is so monumentally impressive. Hmm. And, like, I mean, I kept, I keep thinking to myself, like, what if I had, like, a car or an animal I could ride or something? And, like, that would speed things up a lot, but hmm. then it would also take away some of that sense of hugeness of it all. Like, if it doesn't take you 20 minutes to get from one side of a map to the next side of the map, then you don't feel quite as small as you would otherwise. So it's one of those things where it's like, you kind of have to balance, like, what does it mean in terms of setting and story? And what does it mean in terms of, like, hurting the player a little bit? <laughs> yeah. How much pain are you willing to put up with yeah. the game? Yeah, and it, it hasn't been so bad yet. Um, it is just one of those things that... I roll my eyes a little bit when I enter a new map and it is massive, but once I've been playing it for like five minutes, then I kind of get back into the the groove. So I've been playing that. Um, as far as completions, I finished my replay of 999. I don't really have a lot more to say about that than we didn't talk about last episode. Um, I still really enjoyed it, even if the final puzzle is literally just Sudoku. Um, and then I played Gal Gun 2 for Nintendo Ooh, Switch. That's a great game. I had a really weird time with it. Um, it's actually not good, by the way. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> I felt very uncomfortable <laughs> playing it. Because I, I just felt squeamish and skeevy the whole time. <laughs> Um, you're you're pretty like innocent, aren't you? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's innocent so much as I am asexual. So, so when I'm faced with those sorts of things, I'm not the intended audience. Um, I'm not either, but it, it's fine. <laughs> I am, and I had the same feeling with the first one. So, yeah, it's just it's a weird, weird game. It's oh. a great game. <laughs> well, that's the weird thing. Like, I'm assuming a lot of two is the same as one when I say this, but it's actually quite a good shooter. Yeah. Underneath all of the the boobs awesome and nice. bodies and acid. <laughs> yeah. Which there's definitely an appeal to that, but also this is a good game that I sort of want to keep playing. And I find myself very distracted from the game. <laughs> it's not so good in VR, though. I oh, also I haven't tried it in VR. I played it on the Vita, so... I I wasn't really enjoying it on Switch, the gameplay of it. Um, I mean, there were times you I could... should not have ported it. There were times I could kind of get into the groove of it. Um, but, like, the controls are just really weird. And they feel really heavy and weighty. And... There are times when you can use the gyroscope controls, and I find that really effective, but it's only when you zoom in, and if you're not zoomed in, then you have to use the stick controls, so you're like constantly switching between stick and gyro, and it's just very lopsided, I'd say. Yeah. But anyway, that's all that I've completed. I think I'm going to move us on, since that's all I have to say. Anybody else have anything to add? Uh, I don't think so. All right, so then we're going to talk about the questions we received from the forums. And, Rick, I'm going to get you to go first. It's fine by me. So my question comes from Son of a Pitch, and it is, what trailer has gotten you the most hyped for a game? 
And for me, that answer is quite easy. And it only goes far back as E3 last year, which was the trailer for The Last Night, if either of you remember that. Oh, yeah. The, like, cyberpunk one. With the pixel graphics that nearly made me cream my pants. <laughs> so, I, I mean, that's slightly exaggerated, but it looks <laughs> phenomenal. And that aesthetic quite literally sold me on the game. So hopefully it doesn't let me down, but it has got me very hyped. You can put that look away, Toast. <laughs> I can't stop my face from making, making faces. faces. I'm sorry. <laughs> make it make nicer faces. I'm, I'm taking it that this is your catchphrase now, Toast. <laughs> I really hope not. I don't want that one. When, uh, when inevitably we get a How Long to Beat podcast wiki and you have your own page, then that's going to be your quote underneath it. And or little Woody style action figures with a pull cord. <laughs> I get that I'm super expressive, but maybe if y'all. Is... I can't yeah. stop my face making faces. I'm a well, trash fire. Well, it's because. <laughs> is that your American accent? <laughs> I'm no good at accents, so. Well, Other I imagine my... it's because my father is deaf, and so if you want to express yourself in how you. It's so you over exaggerate your facial expressions, and I'm guessing that's why. Okay, what you've done there is very smart because you've pulled me into dangerous political waters. Yeah. <laughs> you try to insult me now, it's going to come off as crass. And you that's never that. stopped me before, I wouldn't be too worried. <laughs> Remember, you are on a yellow card right now. Am I? Well, it was a it, it was a threatening the red. It was a red card, but I had to knock it down because I didn't give you the warning card yet. Normally, the refs don't get haggled with by the players. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Me, but anything yeah, anything else so, to say? Okay. What trailers have gotten you to the most hyped for a game, past or present? Um, but. I'm going to I'm going to give two answers because we never answer these questions the way that they're meant to be answered anyways so I have liberty um I'm going to say that the the one that I liked as I guess an adult or an older person was the first trailer for Dead Island which is Ooh. kind of a basic answer at this point I think a lot of people were really moved by it but mm. it it was an incredibly directed uh piece of cg um just like from the music of it to the editing of the present scenes interspersed with the uh the past scenes and i think they were playing like one of them was going in forwards motion and one of them was playing in reverse and stuff um it was a pretty remarkable video um it but better I, I, off than most games that year, including Dead Island. <laughs> yeah, Dead Island was not a great game, but the trailer yeah. will always stand. It really was a letdown. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I will say that the trailer that has gotten me the most hyped for any game ever, and this is going way back, it was... Uh, well, let me preface it a little bit. When I was a kid... Uh, my older sister used to work at Blockbuster. And so she would be able to get me, like... Uh, she would be able to bring me game rentals home. But she also had all of these promotional uh, videos from Blockbusters for, like, new games and movies that were coming out and stuff. And so she brought home this one promotional video that had trailers for Animal Crossing and the GameCube game Vex. And I watched that promotional video hundreds of times, I'm sure. And I got so hyped for both of those games. I feel like I recognize the name Vex. Was that the weird-ass platformer? Yeah, it's like a really dark, almost Lovecraftian in style. Maybe not Lovecraftian, but it's certainly cosmic sort oh of gosh. platform. I remember yes. the promo that you're referencing for Animal Crossing. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so great. That was such like I it would cycle through and I used to watch it over and over and over too. 
yeah it's just i don't know it's it it gives such a perfect uh idea of what the game actually is it's just wandering around talking to your animal buds doing chores for them going fishing it's just it's so pure (laughs) and that that game did not let down by any means so those are my two The the one that has me hyped for this year would probably be from the E three would probably be the trailer for Death Stranding. Yeah. <laughs> Just because that one was like I was already looking forward to it and then it like completely subverted my expectations. And I have no idea what's going on with it and I love it. But um and then the trailer in the past that I'm going to come over there, and I'm going to smack you. <laughs> um, the Death Stranding trailer made no sense. You earned that wrong. Well, it, it got me hyped. It wasn't okay. like okay. what made the most sense. I'll give you that one. You got me there. Um, but in the past, I remember being maybe 11, and the trailer for Bioshock had just come out. Ooh. And I don't remember being more in awe of a game than I was then. Was that the Welcome to Rapture trailer or was that something yes, different? Yes, it was. It was like yeah. when they went down and it didn't look like any other game had before it. So I was super, super hyped. And I can't, there are probably games that like had better trailers, but I can't remember. <laughs> and I remember that instance, so. Don't judge me, I haven't played Bioshock yet. Oh so my God. <laughs> Has that ever, has that ever been one of the games of the month? Yes, it has. Oh, okay. It probably was, and I skipped it because I didn't own it. <laughs> There's no excuse I, not to own it anymore. Well, I need to get a copy of the. They've redone it recently, haven't they? They remastered it all. Yeah, and somebody told me that aside from remastering it, they're remaking. Oh, it was you, Kurf. You're the one who told me. Did I? That they, yeah, you said that they were remaking the first one. Are you sure you're not thinking about System Shock? No, they're remaking that one too, and they're remaking the first one. Are they? I don't know that there's that much to remake in Bioshock, is there? It's like I don't know. One gen old. They were remaking it, and then I. It was somebody I trust. <laughs> no, I don't think it was Curve. I don't know. Yeah, because that doesn't sound familiar. But I also no. don't remember anything that I've ever said in my life. So. Huh. It's. It just doesn't make sense to me that they'd be remaking it. Like... It doesn't make sense to me either, but that's what that person said, and I trust them, I think. <laughs> okay. I mean, did it so... make sense when they remade Shadow of the Colossus? But no, it that didn't. still ended up being a good vaguely, game. Vaguely. Well, that, was, is... that was at least two gens back. It is a good game, but I don't think that they should have remastered it or remade it so many times. I don't think it needed it. Colossus, you might be right. I mean, with that one... People complained about the physics a bit anyway, didn't they, from the PS2 version. There were certain things that a remaster could have fixed. Which, I mean, didn't get fixed, but in any case. But that's besides the point. They just ported it kind of terribly. I have the, the HD port on PS3. I'll have to get to it eventually. That's another one I haven't played yet. <laughs> Why are you doing this podcast? I'm, I'm too busy <laughs> playing Tack and the Power of Juju on GDBA to find time for these games. So. You've got to have priorities. I mean, I think that I think that the three of us represent a pretty good cross section of like gaming culture, because um, like I, I the diva gremlin, the, the gremlin, and then we've the got. Trash <laughs> We've got Rick, who just plays handheld and mobile games, and then I basically just play everything and don't have firm opinions on anything, so... You'd be, like, the neutral, like, neutral... I feel like if you put it in an analogy, we are, me and Toast, sort of two factions at complete opposite ends, and you are the ginger Switzerland. (laughs) Okay. The red of the flag matches the red of your hair. <laughs> so, in this analogy, Rick, you are clearly the Axis powers, while Toast is the Allied powers. 
I feel like I can't entirely refute it, but very upsetting <laughs> is that statement, and very Yoda is my speech. Wait, which country would I be? Specifically, which country? Um... The French. Because they're, the be. they're the shittest of the Allied powers, it's got to be. <laughs> is my special power waving the white flag? <laughs> Your special power is the power of surrender. Zero MP, use every turn. It's like your equivalent of Magikarp and Tackle. I do not want this. I do not want any of it. I refuse. I will stick to my diva gremlin. <laughs> I, f I feel like that's more accurate. You could be a French diva gremlin. <laughs> I know. That's exactly the kind of response I wanted to elicit. And I realize that this doesn't translate very well to the podcast, but... Speaking of the podcast, we do have two <laughs> more questions to get through. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of staying on topic. Did everybody answer the question about the trailers? I think, I think so. so, yeah. Okay, I guess I will go next. Okay. Um, and mine was Pokepause. What is the most amount of games you've played in a single gaming franchise or series? And mm -hmm. um, I think it might be a three-way tie between, um, well, Zelda, obviously, <laughs> and then uh, Grisaya. Like Fruit of Grisaya, Grisaya no Kajutsu, um, and Fate's Day Night. Because they have so many spin offs and so many games that I've just, I've probably played tons. I think Fruit of Grisaya has at least 17 games now. I can't remember how many Fate's Day Night has, and then Zelda just has tons too. And that's For all me. I have to say about them. <laughs> I'm going to double. Oh, actually, two, four, six, eight. Do you want to jump in, Kurt? Because I'm just double checking my. Sure. Um, I I haven't checked by like the actual numbers, but it would either be Mario, if we're counting like all of the various different Mario games, or yeah, Mega sure. Man. Yeah. Um. And I'm not sure. I want to say Mario, just because there are so many freaking mario games in like every single genre imaginable and i've even played some of the crappy like mario is missing and mario's time machine and stuff but then i, I mean don't think those count <laughs> thank you for for saying that like uh the cgi uh zelda do not count in the franchise either <laughs> Well, Does... excuse <laughs> that's the cartoon and the cartoon is untouchable um, question though, <laughs> does Link's crossbow training count? Yeah, yes, sure that does. counts. That's officially licensed by Nintendo. Okay, there you go. So were the CDR games? Nope, nope. <laughs> I, I, I well, they know. were. They, they they objectively were. <laughs> we we do not count those. They do oh, not what? exist. <laughs> it's the royal we. We do not. The count. royal we. <laughs> Don't talk to the Brit about royal. <laughs> um but I'd pick the wrong time to take a drink then. <laughs> I'd only I'd only say that Mega Man might be a contender just because there are so many games and a lot of them are like so quick to beat, like you can do them in four or so hours for most of them. Um Do you like Mega Man? I love Mega Man. I adore yeah. Mega Man. Yeah. You don't seem like the type. Really? What's the oh, type? No, I guess I guess you I guess you do. I don't know. <laughs> I'm much more a Mega Man X fan, if that indicates anything. Yes, that actually does change things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but so yeah, those would be my two. Me... Oh sorry, go on. No, I'm for done. For me uh, um there's a clear winner with twelve games and there's an honorable mention. <laughs> So the honorable mention first is Castlevania. Ah. So I've played all of the GBA ones, all of the DS ones, which each one of them is in their own right amazing. I've played the two PS2 ones, distinctly less amazing. <laughs> and then I've played Symphony of the Night, phenomenally amazing, oh, and yes. the Dracula X Chronicles. Sorry? No, I was just agreeing that Symphony of the Night is a godsend. Should I play Castlevania? Yeah. 
Yes. Pardon? Yes, I yes, yes. Like I've never actually played a Castlevania. You should, should definitely play. Absolutely. Um what do you think that I'm trying to think of which style you would prefer because there are just the ones that are basic 2D platformers and then there are the ones that are actually like more Metroid in style like you have to go across a huge world map going back and backtracking with new items and powers and stuff. I don't know. It's really weird because I I don't necessarily say I like platformers and then I find that some of like the games that I'm sweet on are actually platformers and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I think Order of Ecclesia is a great starting point for anyone. I tried playing the first one ever made just because it's in my nature to go back to the original and I just I couldn't do it. Okay. So Yeah, the first one is not a great starting place. It's also not um, demonstrative of how the later games play at all. Yeah. So the think... later games post Symphony are much more like a Metroid title. Yeah, and much and more... it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's true. Um, in terms of if you wanted to play with a whip... Not really. Then... <laughs> it didn't work. In the game... Like... I think like it was um, it was Super Castlevania where they introduced the eight directional whip, right? And also the shaky all over the placey whip. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I think it's great fun. Yeah, it, that really improves the gameplay when you can fire the whip in basically any direction. Um but if you don't want the whip, then I would say Symphony of the Night onwards through like the GBA and DS games would be a good choice. And yeah, honestly, seven quite similarly. honestly, the first Lords of Shadow is pretty darn fun too, but totally different in style. Yeah, I mean, that that's much more like a God of War game. For what that's worth. But if you like God of War, you literally have like two hours worth of experience in God of War, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, for anyone listening, Order of Ecclesia and I think Aria of Sorrow are both great mm -hmm. jumping in points. Controversial opinion, I think they're both better than Symphony. But I haven't you know. played them in long enough to be able to say whether or not that's true. I just know I'm that sure Symphony is a masterpiece. Opinion, I'll probably disagree. <laughs> But I, I, don't, I know nothing. You don't have to disagree with everything. <laughs> but it's my character like flaw. Now, <laughs> at this point, I, I agree, it is a flaw. <laughs> I. <laughs> so that's the honourable mention, just briefly, and then the actual winner is the Cube Escape series. So for anyone who's played any of the Rusty Lake titles or the little sort of vignette cube escape room puzzle games that come with them so who are, are you they're what? great they're really fucking good Bleep. Cube? i'm gonna look it up real quick because it sounds I, really familiar the story's very cube sort of twin peaks david lynchy what the fuck are these Bleep. I mean, the that's a good response is? to have actually in fairness what is this art what is this? <laughs> the best like... way to find out is to play. So all of the... There are nine Cube Escape games. They're all free online. Or you can download them to your Android or iOS device. They play the same as they would on Flash. And then there are three sort of full Steam releases. And they are under the Rusty Lake moniker. Looks like a hella good time, I guess. <laughs> well, the audience aren't seeing the eye rolls and they're hearing what is a true statement. <laughs> They're really well worth giving a go. It's if you played nine 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 and enjoyed the way those puzzles sort of played out for the game of the month, the Cube Escape series plays like that, but with much more of an emphasis on the puzzles and the stories being told through those puzzles. Although the puzzles are quite stupid. There was one <laughs> I played through most of them with my housemates sort of backseat driving and just playing it through and bouncing solutions off each other. And one of them, which we still joke about to this day, a good few months later, is 
a key that you needed to find was procured by putting a fly on a mouse trap, looking away, turning back, and finding a dead fish caught in the trap because it had eaten the fly. What? Exactly. <laughs> it, it makes much more of a good time when you actually experience it rather than hearing someone describe how dumb it sounds. <laughs> and I recognise it does sound dumb. But Just yeah, a bit. So that, I've played 12 of those games. I do not regret it, and I would recommend them. Okay, so what I'm hearing is play Castlevania. All right, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so um, m the question that I picked... Also, did you guys say who uh, from the forums asked oh, those questions? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, just oh, wanted to yeah, make sure. I did. That, All right. Yeah. So my question is from Milori. It is, what topic do you wish more game developers talked about or made games about? Uh, which I thought was a pretty interesting question. Um, and it's something that I've definitely thought of. And I could answer this in a number of ways, but I think I'll just answer it at least today in the most general of ways. Maybe we can talk about it more in depth at a later date. But in the most general sense, what I wish more game developers would talk about and make games about is really just games that detail real people with real life struggles and i say that in a very generic way because i know that those games exist and frequently they are secluded into their own genres so visual novels or walking simulators deal with those sorts of things whereas once you get into you know other types of games then it's all about it's all very genre locked i find um you have your post-apocalyptic games, you have your sci-fi games, you have your high fantasy games, your low fantasy games, all of that sort of stuff. Your fables, your myths, your legends, um, and the stories and the characters are locked down in those sorts of things. And I think that we've had some really incredible stuff come out of them. Um, but even things that try to tackle like real-life issues, I find, are still sequestered to very surreal modes, kind of postmodern modes. And I understand why. It's difficult to make those sorts of things without having to rely on, you know, nonviolent means. Like, violence is kind of a go to thing in video games uh, that ends up I putting into a genre. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but I don't know. I'd really just like to have a game about a person living their day-to-day -day life, dealing with their conflicts and relationship struggles that's still fun to play. And I feel like I haven't really come across a lot of those. So you want Heavy Rain? No, because even Heavy Rain is genre commodified. Because Heavy How's Rain that? is... One, it's like a near-future sort of story, like Jaden with his investigation his futuristic glasses that can scan crime scenes and stuff. And also yeah, that's say. that's more of a mystery. Like, that's the underlying premise of it. So you'd want it to be more of a slice of life? In a way, yeah. Okay. You know, but with is... that kind of mechanic, or...? I don't, I don't even... I mean, I do like the mechanics in Heavy Rain a lot. I think that they're actually pretty fun to use. But mm. I don't know. I'm going to let you finish, but just yes. briefly, it's my playthrough that I watched of Heavy Rain. Whenever he put those sci-fi glasses on, the theme music from CSI would play. I just thought that was fun to share. You go ahead. Um, I think when those games, like, when they're being made, though, they get shit on so much that there's, like, this fear of making them now. Because I remember when that Dragon Cancer came out, you would think that people would be supportive about it, but the vast majority of people are like, get this off Steam, it's crap. And I, I don't know, it's just like, I think there's this fear that goes into that people won't want to play it. Well, I mean, I think, I mean, that Dragon Cancer is an interesting example because, I mean, I really enjoy it, but it is... 
again, it still fits into one of the mo- those modes I was talking about because it's very postmodern and it's very surreal in its presentation. And I guess I don't understand what you want from a game then. I'm not sure I know what I want in a game, but mostly like it 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 is really hard to explain, but basically like in fiction which of course that's what I'm studying like we have a distinction between what we call literary fiction and what we call genre fiction so genre fiction is like your George R R Martin uh and like Ender's Game sci-fi fantasy mystery romance all that sort of stuff and then literary fiction is just like your Great Gatsby your Moby Dick things that are just dealing with uh, character they're very character centric studies um that don't really rely on convention or anything like that not to say that literary or genre one is better than the other but i would like to see more games in a literary mode not necessarily like using that same the term cat but lady? would that be an okay example of that have you not played it i have i'm just that's I guess sort of. It's still leaning a little into that kind of... That's kind of a horror, psychological horror game. I I guess so. I just don't think that there would be a whole lot of incentive to play a game that... I don't know. I guess it's your personal opinion. Yeah, but I mean, like, your reaction is exactly why I think we don't see a lot of those types of games is because people players and developers alike don't see the incentive for it but i think that the onus needs to fall on us collectively to figure out how to incentivize it because i don't see why it can't work i just think that not enough imaginative effort has been put forward into making it work Mm, i guess i mean i Uh, have nothing against playing something like that the conundrum is how you make that transition to the big budget because when you're throwing that kind of money at a project obviously you are inclined to go with what works so you look at destiny and it's we want a big budget franchise what works shoot shoot bang bang it's nice and easy and the the example you drew up that dragon cancer it's a small indie project obviously well, came from a- people making them well, that's what I mean, and with the greatest of respect to the small indie teams like the ones who made that Dragon Cancer, you probably need people with more... Creative minds is the wrong word, but you need enough people, enough good people, and enough money to throw at that, I think, if you want to expedite the process of finding... of striking gold, as it were, finding the way to make that engaging from a mechanical standpoint if you follow i do toast okay so this is going to be a weird example but imagine like imagine night in the woods but without maybe like the last hour of it or so no yeah i understand that was actually one of the examples i was going to give but like without the mystery part yeah i I get that but most of the people like i read the reviews for it most of the people who were playing it were only playing it for the mystery part and didn't want the slice of life life part Would see you... that's interesting i guess we just maybe we follow different circles of critics because <laughs> maybe because like everybody that like i follow on twitter and that sort of stuff they just i agree that with them that the slice of life character study stuff is the strongest aspect of it. It is. But I people it's weren't buying the game for that, I guess. I don't and know. I think my brain is hurting a little bit. <laughs> that's the other challenge, making it appeal to enough people to justify the cost. Because obviously people like what they know and think that they know what they like. And so you need to give those consumers a really compelling reason to to throw enough money at it. The reason that the indies are able to be successful beyond having the drive to do it 
is that there aren't as many overheads so you don't need as many people to engage with it for it to work and it if it is and I, I don't know that we can say other way if it is that there aren't so many people that would be interested in those kinds of games there's potentially an imbalance there I just think Kurt needs to start playing some more visual novels because there's literally thousands there with Slice of Life. Yeah, and I mean, it's an need to read I, ju more I just, I just think it's unfortunate <laughs> that all of that. I, I think it's unfortunate that gaming developers have decided that if we're going to have a Slice of Life game, let's just make it a visual novel. I, I think that there are ways to bring it into more accessible, not accessible, but, you know, more mechanical modes, I think. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to argue one way or the other, because I like both genres, and even if they don't switch it up for me, I'll still probably play it. Um, what I get for people who don't want just, like, another walking simulator or another VN or whatever. Yeah, those are the preconceptions you're fighting, I guess. Yeah. So, anyway, I kind of ranted about that for ten minutes. So, the question was, what topic do you wish more game developers talked about or made games about? So, I want to make sure both of you have a chance to answer that. Mental Mine was going to be brief anyway. I, I can't say it's anything I've really thought about. I tend to... Well, Toast has clearly thought about it because she just answered and you kept talking over her. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll mental pretend illness. it. What? I, mental illness. I want okay. fuck tons more games about mental illness or about like disorders and just more... Cause, a vast majority of the market is people with mental illness. And mm -hmm. most of the time when they actually do a good job of examining the human psyche, they're really fantastic games. First of all, there's no incentive not to. And it, it just like, there needs to be more. It needs so to be. Yeah. Are you thinking in terms of things where that's an element of the story not so you're not looking for something that's much more on the nose um no it doesn't have to be like right. it, okay. it doesn't have to be like depression quest which is terrible <laughs> where it's that's the twine game isn't it um i think like yeah the, i think it is but it, it just wasn't a good game and I, it was a little too on the nose you don't need to make your game all about it but you need to have characters because having a perfect human being isn't a thing well depression quest was also just like flat out wrong wasn't it yeah it was just flat out <laughs> like isn't the ending it. that like the character just decides to stop being depressed or something and then suddenly yeah, everything works out well, right at it least in one of the endings that literally the only way to get happiness was to go to therapy ah uh, okay that's what it was i'm not gonna say that that isn't for maybe for the person who wrote it and made it, maybe that was her form of her, her solution, but that's not the case for everybody, and it's blatantly spent, like spreading misinformation. Yeah, it's yeah. a hard one to say definitively, I guess. Yeah, that's so I'm not going to say definitively it's not the, a, a good solution. I'm just going to say it's not for everybody, and I just don't think it works as a game. Okay. But... Hmm games like uh hellblade work fantastically and like night in the woods and a whole slew of v vns that explore mental illness all work really great because they're not preaching at you and yeah it's well that's always the danger relatable characters that are still like badass but <laughs> also have vulnerability mm -hmm. okay. uh, that's all i have to say fair hmm um it's a weird one because there's nothing that jumps out at me that I'm thinking, why are there not more games about X? I definitely like to see more in terms of because the question sort of asks what we'd like to see developers do more of as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will focus on that. I would love to see more things in the vein of El Shaddai. So high concept stories and art directions and ideas attached to bigger budget properties more 
conventional styles of gameplay as a means of getting that art in front of more eyes. And I, I think it's a really good way of reinvigorating a game that might otherwise be quite stale. Because when you... Taking Al Shaddai as an example, like I said before, the whole package is far better than its constituent parts. And I think if you married what is a flawed combat system in that game to a more standard story or setting or environment, the game would drop to a three or a four. The, I think you can carry experiences on that, and I think it's a really good thing for developers to be doing. I'm surprised, then, that you don't like Kojima as much, because Kojima's mm -hmm. all about high-concept with accessible mechanics. All right, I yeah. don't know why you don't like Kojima. ABC, why do you think I don't like Kojima? I'm starting to think that once something gets popular enough, you can't stand behind it, and you have to find some reason why it's not good. <laughs> I'm a bit of a contrarian. I don't think that's it, though, because I quite liked Peace Walker. What the fuck is Peace Walker? Peace Walker is the PSP, PSP one, right? Yeah, I had a blast with that. It's an but okay game. That was game. the mechanics of it that I, I really got into the whole base building and recruiting people, and the the sort of sim management side of that game. Didn't mind that you're aiming with face buttons sort of got used to it. I suppose with Kojima, I don't think he's high concept so much as he's a fucking madman. <laughs> I... great. <laughs> he is a madman, but like... I mean, I, I can't sit here and argue that everything holds together perfectly, but I will say that Metal <laughs> or Gear Solid... remotely competently. Metal Gear Solid 2 is a masterpiece, and oh, I, I, won't, I won't hear anything to the contrary of that. I did three buttons to aim a weapon. <laughs> I just love insane geniuses who try so hard and find something that they love and just put it together. Even if it's like a scrap heap of like beautiful mess, it's just so nice to look at and feel the love that came from them. But I, I don't even see I don't even see Metal Gear Solid 2 as a mess. I mean, I, I think Metal Gear Solid 2 in specific. <laughs> I mean, I guess Metal Gear Solid 4 is definitely a mess, a beautiful mess, but like Metal Gear Solid 2 is one of the pinnacles of gaming in my opinion. Well, you said you didn't want to hear it, so I won't I won't give it to you. <laughs> Not today anyway. Okay, we'll we'll get into it somewhere down the line. We That's will a topic fight. for a future podcast episode. Yeah, an entire discussion topic solely ex you explored. You're saying that the concepts itself is what you would like to see better? I'd like to see things that are more high concept. So what I have in mind very much is sort of El Shaddai jumping off from an obscure, um, non-canonical Bible book and taking those characters and throwing a beautiful art style at it. That doesn't mean that I don't want or appreciate the the challenging of the ideas that Kojima does, because I definitely like that aspect of his work. I like that aspect a lot. I can get behind but, that, I guess. I'd love more you not just cookie-cutter games. Yeah. Like Tuck in the Power of Juju. Like Bayonetta. <laughs> oh, I want some more Bayonettas. Oh, I thought you were I saying Bayonetta was cookie cutter, and I was like, whoa, no, whoa. I'm saying I want more unique well, games too. like Bayonetta. True that. Yeah, even, I need to play Bayonetta. Even most of the franchises that we know are all, all pretty cookie cutter. Um, I suppose a lot of them didn't start out cookie cutter. I would say that they started out cookie cutter because that was the way things were done back then. Well, Metroid wasn't, for example. I Metroid was quite pioneering, I think. It's an alien. <laughs> um, it, the it, thing about like it, it's difficult to talk about things that far back, because I mean I'm thinking about games in the like 
PlayStation 1 era onward being mostly derivative. Yeah. Because I, I mean, think that, that was... I think that the early console generations were still I mean, they were very derivative when you get to a lot of the games, but you're going to find things like Super Mario Brothers was, you know, the first platformer of that kind. Um Metroid was the first platformer of that kind. Zelda was the first RPG of that kind. Uh, okay. And I think that when you go that far back, everything is kind of codifying the games that came after them. And then okay, you get to point. PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and that's where everybody was kind of like, well, what can we do that's new? <laughs> Maybe. Hmm. So is that... Have we all answered that question now then? I think so. So is that all of the questions? That is all of the questions from the forums. So we're okay. going to go ahead and take this opportunity to drop some spicy intermission music for you. And we'll be right back for recommendations. I actually have one too. Ah. That's not how this works. No, it is. <laughs> if you don't think so, then we're gonna take. We're gonna pull the plug on your your thing. Oh, you, you're trying to cut me. Yeah. Without further ado, here is a remix from the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney soundtrack called "Spirit Law" by Melody and Detective Tuesday, courtesy of OCRemix.org. And on Tuesday, please be seated. Mr. Romo, I must admit that I'm puzzled. You hosters claim to be such relaxed, free spirits, yet your rules for social behavior are even more set, tight, and rigid than those of square society. <laughs> A lot of the civil everyday behavior is illegal. So there's always a lot of heat on this. If you break the rules of it, you get put down. But you break the square rules and it's very in the slam. That's a big difference. Court is now in session. Check it. Prosecution ready, defense ready. Tuesday in front of the judge, things could get heavy. Your Honor, I don't kill beats. I don't even got skills. Please, I plead not guilty. <laughs> A laugh from the prosecution. You and your crew know exactly what y'all been doing. It's all truthless. Witnesses saw you do it. It's the wrong and I be refuting the evidence. I got to prove it. Defense says, I bet it's baseless conjecture. Tuesday been whacked since he started in grade 11. Never heard his tracks. He ain't saying nothing. Not a single word about how he spayed a gun and clip. The jury's whispering. Judge grips the gavel. Slam order in the court. Let's see how this thing unravels. Mr. Palmer, you may call your first witness. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Let us begin then. The courtroom's quiet, but it gets loud in the mind. It's wondering what exactly went down the truth only thing we came for facts come together to make sure it takes form so we listen close every minute know every tick that goes to those who miss it be acting as if they didn't know one like the man swearing oath as he gets into his seat mr witness spit your testimony please hey yo i heard the man rap it was murder stand back when he hold the mic because he's straight blowing like dynamite tongue fit and final fight through the streets reckless spitting flows that's the closest to musical perfection forget it it's impossible to match every writer's song ain't a single one of these rappers going quite as hard holy i heard he choked and lost two battles yeah but it's so smooth like on the piano. Still need to be convinced. This is from the crime scene. OC remix. 
It's irrefutable, solid, conclusive, gruesome Tuesday, why'd you have to do it? Why? Suddenly he stands forth, different mood in his eyes He seems to have transformed The DJ was letting track spin like that's sick I made that crap back, flip in a casket Bass, this is trying to play me, talk about on the wackest And how I ought to care about what they think is happening Don't ask for the crime, I ain't planning to practice There wasn't an accident, my ears just told my brain Yo, that's sick I'm glad they found the tape to back it I take this moment to admit I'm great at rapping The savage that broke free from the cage he was trapped in As they dragged him away, all that was heard was his laughing Yo, Those are happening. Okay, so let me check. I've got this right. So it's recommendations, then toasts porner, and then <laughs> we're moving Porn on. Corner. To and also, my friend said it should be um. Oh crap! It was something about t- a toaster oven. <laughs> oh crap! Like it's something about that toaster oven. Isn't it a catchy name? <laughs> You've got to get something a bit more concise. Well, it was really good, but I forgot it. So All right, I we'll get back know. to us on it, and we will give you a segment for it to be continued i need to think of a good pun for my name as well um we don't have to do that right now we're a bit we'll work on it in the intermission (laughs) we're a bit pressed for time so anyway rick give us your recommendations okay so the recommendation this episode is the sixth game that i completed this cycle and the one i neglected to mention before which is grow home which is a beautiful little palate cleanser of a climbing game. Really unique using the triggers for your hands. I think the aiming could be a little bit better, but it's such a charming experience. Super cheap. Not takes cheap about three hours. For, yeah, not cheap enough for how long or how short it is, though. If you're waiting to get it on sale. I mean, to be fair, I, I think I would, in hindsight, have paid the asking price for it, which I think is about six pounds. It's like fifteen dollars, isn't it? Get out of town! It is not that expensive. Yeah, it is. It's like twenty dollars. No, I don't believe that. That's an alternative fact. We also have, (laughs) we also have different like markets. Like it's six ninety nine on the you and your you and your post Brexit pounds. We're dealing with hard cold U S dollars. It's eight dollars. Is not twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Bull. It was straight up twenty dollars. Bull, oh bull! It really was. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It... It's never been that much money, never. And even if it was, I would still tentatively recommend it at that price. Yeah, maybe you just got scam toast. <laughs> no, because Nick got it the day it came out because he wanted it to try it for his VR. So I I remember. Was this on like PS4 or something? No. Oh, Grow Home VR probably was twenty pounds. Grow Home without the VR. Uh, twenty US dollars actually. Expensive. Gold standard over here. Yeah, if you don't get it for the silly VR, and my two cents is that VR is a bad idea for that game. Then (laughs) really is it? Is it so (laughs) sick? Right, so get the Weetabix non-VR version <laughs> for £7 or your regional equivalent and you will have a great time and not throw up. <laughs> Is it sad that I, as an American, have actually had Weetabix before? What no, is Weetabix? Weetabix is great. Is it's Weetabix? awful. <laughs> I want to have a Milky Bar. Those look so good. <laughs> They're pretty good. You can't find them many places now, though. I was I was reading a visual novel and it like it um it was actually really good. It was an English one and they had like the main character eating a milky bar and I was like it was supposed to be seductive but I'm just like that looks good. I want one. <laughs> They're pretty good. It's it's just white chocolate. It's nice but it is just white chocolate if that's any Isn't consolation. It like ice cream though. No. They were having like an ice cream. It was like really like Oh, hang on. Hang on. Did you say Milky Way? No. No, no we have Milky, Milky Ways. Bar. Yeah, Milky Bars are just white chocolate. No, 
they're like Milky Pops or whatever. No, you're thinking of something different. They're though. Milky Pops. <laughs> that Milky Pop is not a Milky Bar. Well, while you guys figure this out, actually, I can't move on without you because <laughs> it's <my topic. laughs> because it's your topic. <laughs> well, it's important. Uh, I feel like anything... that needs to be a ballad. I can't. Be... <laughs> that's the new... that's the title of this episode. I can't <laughs> move on without you. <laughs> right. So, are you are you done or? Well, I'm just getting started. That's sort of the point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's let's go ahead and move on to the discussion the topic. you can't move on without me is because I am the five hours old proud owner of a new 3DS. And I mean new in the sense of the revised version with the little kind of analog nipple rather than new as in it was in shrink wrap. Did you have to call it a nipple? It's the Nipple-tastic podcast. It's, the, okay, it's true. Not. They're called it, grips. They're called grips. Grips. They yeah, grips. Grip. Like get a grip, Rick. Yeah. I can't can... get a grip on the nipple. It's a bit <laughs> peculiar. And mine has like special. You can get special ones. Like I got a GameCube one. For nipple. Mine. Stop. Don't call them that. Please. You're like purple. It's me very uncomfortable. <laughs> More importantly, it's got dual trigger setups, which are nice. I haven't had a chance to use them yet, and that's sort of the point. So the only game I currently have is Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. And my brother has got um, Kid Icarus, Kingdom Hearts, Fire Emblem. Which one? Two Bravely Defaults. Which, which Fire Emblem? Um, Awakening. That's important. Okay. That one's the good one. Good. Uh, what's the issue with Echoes? Because this is sort of the point. I don't know anything about the 3DS library. Echoes got... A lot of people say it was good. I played the original. I don't like the changes that they... I don't think it was done good enough. And Echoes is a remaster of one of the older ones, isn't it? Yes, Gaiden. Is that the first or the second or the third or the... It's the... I think the second or the third. I think okay. it's... Yeah. Maybe the third. Um, and they just didn't do a good job. And then Fates is just really poorly written. I really... The characters are all pretty okay, especially Silas. A fantastic <laughs> character. Husbando. Um, I love the voice. I love the voice actor for him. So it's just it's he's the best character. But the rest is not that good. Okay. And so that sort of is this. Looking for recommendations, do's and don'ts. What must I play first? What could I play? Throw them at me. I am going to say this now. I think Pokemon is a waste of not necessarily money, but I don't think the good ones or the new ones are very good. Really? Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not fussed about Pokemon. I'm I'm trying Alpha Sapphire. I'm about 5 minutes in, so I couldn't really say I but it, it's not why I bought the system. Pokemon is one of those franchises where I mean, I like Squirtle is awesome and I love <laughs> Mew, but um you go in and you f the world building is so strong on the onset but when you actually look around it starts to crumble all around you like you talk to people and they're like use elixirs to heal your poke it just feels so very <laughs> flat everything feels so very flat and it makes me sad because it's designed for children and i'm not a fucking oh i'm Bleep. i'm not a child <laughs> but everything feels not very good like, well, then don't play a children's game. What do you want? <laughs> I just want better characters, and I want the world to feel like an actual world and not that I'm just the same. Um, f I think for your purposes, I think that the Pokemon games are a good suggestion for you. Um, I really liked... X and Y, and I really liked Sun and Moon. Um, Sun and Moon is a little more like story and progression based. So if you're the looking, the tutorial is four hours long. Yeah, I mean, if you can get past that, then it opens up a lot. But uh, I would definitely recommend at least X or Y. Um, I feel like it's a pretty 
free open world and i I don't know i just love pokemon not so much for the characters of the world or anything i just like building my team and getting attached to them and like coming up with my basically head cannon for their individual characteristics on the team okay that's what i play the series for if you do have to get one x and y is the best of the group because they allow you to have portal Fact. Fact. That's Alternative or otherwise. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's set Pokemon to one side. Okay. Um, first party, I think I'm going to play pretty much anyth- everything. But oh, Fantasy Life. You should pick up Fantasy Life. What is that? Because I got a very Animal Crossing-y vibe it is from it. so fun. It is kind of like Animal Crossing. Okay. It's um story is garbage but nobody plays it for the story it's just like this giant open world sandbox thing with goals and cute characters and like you can be whatever you want and it's so it is so much fun to play it sounds like way too much of a commitment it's well yeah it sucked up about (laughs) maybe 600 hours of my life It is so much fun, and it's just like there's a giant crafting system. It's it's just a good time to be had. Okay. Maybe, maybe not for me, but maybe for other listeners I at home. I swear you would like it. <laughs> I'll put it in the maybe pile. I'll put it in the maybe pile. <laughs> okay. Um, other games that I've played... Um, the one I'm quite looking forward to actually is Project X Zone. If either of you have played that, that's sort of one of the reasons that I got the system. Project X? X Zone. Is yeah, that's so the like fighting a game? It's the Capcom Bandai crossover thing. But it's a fighting game, right? Uh, no, it's it's like Fire Emblem. It's the turn based. Oh, strategy. is it? Yeah. Oh, but it's, okay. It's a bit. I think it's a hybrid because once you get into the battle, rather than it playing out on screen, you then, a little bit like on Valkyrie Profile, you input button commands to do that fight, if that makes sense. Okay. It's, I played a demo way back on my brother's 3DS, and it's sort of one of the reasons that I decided I did need to pick one up. And so I'm waiting on that on order. Um, I think that's one of the only ones I'm, I've actually bought so far. Have you played have, uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf? I haven't. That one's the best one. Yeah. The best one. Okay. Best and one. they just... Animal Crossing only gets better. Yeah. They did like a huge update for it a year or two back, didn't they? That added to, like a ridiculous amount of content. Paintings. Yeah. Hmm. And AR cards and... um motorhomes now oh is that to go with the whole amiibo thing or yes yeah it is it's to go with the ar cards that they have now Mm. which i think i i think i have most of no i don't have most of them because they came out with more sets but for a while i was collecting them it's good xenoblade chronicles hd that one's good yeah i mean the thing with that one is i have it on wii and i was saying on the forum earlier today actually I've been debating whether or not to get it for 3DS because I think I might actually finish it if I have it on a portable. Oh, this but... one's weird enough to be good for you. Conception 2. That one's really, really weird. And also you can have Monokuma as a um, unlockable. <laughs> like, he shows up. Well, now you have to get it. Yeah, you had me at Monokuma. Is that... I feel like I saw that when they were advertising it for Vita. Is that the dungeon crawler where you, you have to sort of... You Pardon? breed babies and they fight for you, and they're all like little yeah. chibi, like fucking nasty <laughs> things. Why? <laughs> it is so weird. It's like, um, it was designed by the people who made Shin uh, Nagam or Megami Tensei. Um, mm-hmm. so it's like Persona, but like weird, like real weird. See, by that description, you have me sold. The only question then is will it perform better on my Vita or on the 3DS? That's a good question. I mm. honestly think people have said it's better on Vita, so... I, I mean, it's got more horsepower. I suspect that might... But then you also have to flip that against 
how much information how much information does it put on the second screen? How much use do you get out of that? I can't remember. I think that the dungeon map was on the second screen. See, that actually might be enough to sway it for me. But I can't remember, like, for sure, because I haven't really touched my 3DS in a while. That's fine. I'll do a Google. And it's um, funny you mention Persona and Shin Megami Tensei, because that's another one that I know that I'm going to plump for. Although I think this side of the pond, you can only download SMT4 digitally. I don't think there's a physical version. And obviously you can't import it because the console's region locked. Which, that's the way I got around it for Strange Journey when that came out on the DS. So I could just bring that, get an import copy, and then that played on my DS. But for this one, I think I will have to go digital. And I think you should suck it the fuck up and start a Bleep. Monster Hunter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's like one. Just generations. I... Just start generations. It's really great, and you'll you'll have fun, unless you're not good at games. And then you <laughs> I, that sounded like a gauntlet being thrown down to me. Me? Never. 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 Sarcasm, what is that? <laughs> I, I vote that you just turn your 3DS into an Ace Attorney machine. That's not a bad idea. You I'm can get, definitely open to that. You can get the whole trilogy. The trilogy's on there, isn't it? Yeah, the trilogy's on there. Um, dual is it destinies. physical or digital only? I th I think it's digital only. Okay. But yeah, the trilogy's on there. Apollo Justice is on there. Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice are both on there. I Okay. Mm, Miles Edgeworth Investigations 1 might be on there. I'm not That's sure the about DS that. That's one, isn't it? I thought It's I mean, they're all DS ones. But <laughs> Are they? I thought some of them were 3DS exclusive. Well, Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice are 3DS exclusive. Right, the other ones are ported. Okay. Yes. Um, right. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Oh, is that the one that's plus Bowser's Minions? Yeah, so my only caveat to that is that Bowser's Minions is not very fun. I feel but... like we talked about that well, before, you're not back when buying the game. It for yeah. Bowser's Minions. Yeah, but like if I don't know if you already own Superstar Saga or whatnot. I own a ROM of it. <laughs> Actually, I mean, you, that... you might not hate Bowser's Minions because of who you are and just like the way that you play games. Um, what does that mean? Do you want to elaborate on that? No, I mean I mean it very genuinely, since you like to just open the game up for like five minutes on transport or between classes or whatever um mm -hmm. that is the optimal way to play it is just to open it up do a mission or two close it and then do that over the course of the next three months or whatever okay so how does bowser's minions work is it um yeah what is it so it's um i don't even know how to describe it my brain is not working very well right now but basically um it's kind of a strategy game um what you do is every map every mission i guess has uh a number of enemies that you have to mm -hmm. face and they fit into sort of a weapon triangle sort of system so you have to build your troop uh around that weapon triangle so that when they i think you battle in like three waves usually there might be more sometimes um but it gets like tricky and strategic because it might be all ground troops in the first wave, but then it might be all sky troops in the second wave. So you okay. have to kind of, uh, you have to build your troop around what comes in each individual wave. Um, mm -hmm. It gets frustrating because it's very grindy. Um, and yeah, you have to tank a lot of losses. It sounds like uh, Dominion the Two with uh, Minomi's battle like mecha mini game. Oh, I know the one, and there was a similar one in the first Danganronpa as well. No, the first Danganronpa had the island uh, crafty craft thing. 
Wait, is the the Monami one, is that the one where it's like a shooting thing, though? I, I know the one you're thinking of. In one of the games, there's a mode where you sort of have to assign people to things over the courses of the days. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking oh, is about, that another one? Yeah, you have to fight uh, monsters, and depending on which one you fight, you have to uh, choose different skills and stuff to, to do. Ah, yeah, that would have been too, because I didn't even touch that much. <laughs> it sucks. Ah, yeah, I mean, the when you say grinding, uh, that may well be enough to turn me right back off it. But I probably would end Saga and then just testing the other mode out and seeing. But how much have they changed versus the GBA? Do either of you know? Because I. I Better. Is that the only real thing? I think there was. Have to change much. Yeah, I. It's a little. It's easier. It's definitely easier. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm I'm trying to. I know there was a specific mechanic that was changed to make it easier, and I don't know if it's you level up faster, or maybe just don't take as much damage, or something. I don't remember, but it is easier. That to say, well, I've got my PSP Go. I have that game and I can take it with me already. It may well be that that's one I pushed back a little bit or I just don't get. I don't know. I mean, a lot of this sort of depends on how poor I am and how long I'm poor for. <laughs> uh, so. Rune Factory yeah. 4 is, is, a, is a good one to get to. Isn't that the Harvest Moon with the dungeon crawling? Yeah. Okay. It is super, super, super good. Also, mm -hmm. Vic Mignogna's in it, and it's really kind of jarring to see him, <laughs> like, be a butler. And it's really, really weird. Vic Min who, sorry? Vic Mignogna. He's a very popular voice actor. Ah, okay. About the only popular one that I can actually stand in American dubs. Because fuck Monica Rail. Bleep! <laughs> I feel like you have such aggressive specific opinions about obscure creatives in the games industry <laughs> I, I don't know they're good Just opinions as a side note but his, you pull out this random name oh they're really this or they're really that and it just goes straight over my head I memorize names really really good and then I my opinion of them is fixed until I die <laughs> that's healthy standard um so you said you're pretty much covered on first parties right yeah more or less i think i need to pick up majora's mask 3d but other than that my brother's got everything okay um i have actually already beaten 3d land which i really enjoyed that i thought it was really good oh yeah it's a it's just a delightful little game and a, a good poster boy for the 3D as well. The 3D effect works really nicely in that. I, I guess. You know my yeah. opinions about the 3D. I do. I, I know a lot of people's opinions about 3D. And that was that was even on the old 3DSs, because the new one's got... And I didn't realize this until I booted it up and tested it when I was buying it. It has head tracking. So the 3D effect adjusts as you move the system. On the new one, at least, anyway. So if you don't wear glasses, <laughs> right? And that's, I suppose, that's the complicating factor. But you know, to each their own. I, I like it, but I also like that if you don't want it, you can turn it off. Yes, yeah, sir. So, do you have any other questions for us about your brand spanking new 3ds? Um, two. So the first one. Because I noticed that there are demos for them. If I'm going to commit to at least trying a demo, should I go for four ultimate or generations as far as the Monster Hunter games go? Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, crap. For me, players, um, generations is probably the one you would want to start with. Just because Monster Hunter is one of those games where every new iteration makes the gameplay better, um, and also generations showcases a lot of monsters from the past like few games okay and so generations is slightly newer than four ultimate is it yes right okay um about maybe 
five months. Um, cause it was in time for their 25th anniversary. No, no, 15th anniversary, I think it was. And, um, okay. it also has better Palicos, which is a really, really, like, you can What's now one of those with... when they're at home? The, oh, they're, they're felines, they're cats. They, um, they're your little buddy, and in <laughs> generations you can actually play as them. So it makes it, it's pretty fun. You can actually go in and it's like easy mode, I would say. Okay. What, the cats are super powerful or something? No, it's just they have useful skills like um, health recovery. Okay. And they have their own little missions. You can't complain that I play weird games and weird mechanics when you're telling me to play a game where you can play as a cat person. Sorry? (laughs) It's very, very Japanese. And they're not just cat people. They are literal cats. They're cats. Okay. (laughs) You said there was one more question? Uh, Yeah. Do either of you have any sort of eShop specific recommendations? I mean, I guess the the Ace Attorney games for 3DS are eShop specific. Yeah, okay. That's true. All of the digitals. um, If you've never played Earthbound, it's very, very nice on um, the the 3DS. Oh, I'll definitely be playing that on my PSP. It's... (laughs) Is I've already got it downloaded on an emulator. Sorry? Oh, okay. I see. I see. It's worth the $10. Maybe, but then it, it's also worth the zero pounds that I've spent on it. It's, I've started it twice on the PSP, and it's nice on the widescreen on the, the 3000 model. But both times I've started it, I mean, the, the introduction's a little bit slow, and for whatever reason, it's always sort of fallen off. I, I get that, yeah. I've actually played it a lot of times, and it doesn't really pick up until you get to, um, I would say, Tucson. Okay. I mean, it's it's not like I don't want to go back and play it. I just haven't yet. Um, but yeah, there's, there's one that I saw called Box Boy, and everyone that I've spoken to about that or everything I've read about that seems to be it's amazing play it and it's only four pounds so i'll probably jump on that right. maybe push mo i think i've also yeah. heard good things about dylan's rolling western but i've never actually played it myself hmm i think they're bringing a new one out in that series soon aren't they wow i don't know I feel like it's on a direct hmm but i'll have a look into that one okay doke so I think that's about going to cover it tonight. Um, so thank you for listening. Now we're on iTunes. Do we have to do this whole leave us a review? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, leave, I, leave us a review. Give us all the stars. And if you don't... Smash that like button. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter. Yeah, we do have a Twitter now. It's What is the <laughs> handle? Uh, HLTD podcast. Okay, there you go. It's a lowercase t, not that that probably matters for people looking for it. But, uh, yeah. Make sure you don't... Well, also follow the main How Long to Beat account on Twitter that's run by Average Red. But Which also is... follow us. Yeah. And find all three of us in the forum if you want to catch us in between episodes. If these fortnightly episodes just aren't enough <laughs> me for you yeah and uh if you find us in the forums where we're hiding between the posts then you get an achievement 20 gamer score achievements are one we have to have because i've got lots of opinions on achievements (laughs) we'll have a discussion topic about them someday Mm -hmm. all right Uh, So we're going to sign off for tonight, but thank you all for listening. Happy Cinco de Mayo. I know it's (laughs) not going to be out. It's too late. Happy whatever day you listen to this. I'm leaving that in.